Today we're going to discuss the Pratama Purusha Dvivachana of Bula. Um, before we get started, I've had some thoughts about this little side project. <clears throat> I think it has the potential to be interesting and useful to some people. Uh, it's I guess you could say it's not a laugh riot, but what I would advocate is that if you're interested, you copy down the sequence um, that I've given. It's all in the notes, um, but in your own hand in a notebook so that you can practice just reading the sequences aloud and not worrying about trying to memorize them or uh, translate each bit of the sutras, but I think you'll see pretty quickly that the sutras are almost self-explanatory. And uh, also you realize that you're beginning to get a feeling for the language, by which I mean the language of the grammar. So uh, this uh, will, I think, sink in. And it's very important to uh, practice them or just read through them out loud. And that's for a lot of reasons that I've discussed before. But um, if you do that without stressing about remembering or any memorizing or anything, before very long, this will all start to seem very logical. It will start to make sense. And uh, Sutras that seem very esoteric will seem uh, like your old friends, and uh, I, I think you'll enjoy them. Things like Sarvadatagata Dantakayoho, or Tiptashti Shiptasta Mitvasmasta Atam Jatasatam Dvamitvahima Hing. And it's important to be doing them out loud because they are made to be out loud. And uh, like the whole language, really. So, okay, enough of my editorializing. That's what I advocate. So I'm going to keep doing this in bits and pieces because I don't want to take too much time away from our um, uh, Ashtadhyayi sutras. Um, but I, I hope this will be, uh, as we build it up, some interest to some. Uh, it's, it's a little different than you're likely to find elsewhere. So here we go. Bhu Lat Pratama Purusha Dvivachana. So um, here's a good time to go back and review the uh, first video I did on the fundamentals. So you will remember <clears throat> how we get to the uh, uh, terms Pratama Purusha and also Dvivachana. And having done that, it will become clear that since we're now talking about dual number, the suffix tas follows the root as we begin this, this uh, part. Now, there is an interesting little uh, side topic here. By a sutra, Navibhaktao tu smaha. Navibhaktao tu smaha. Um, the final s of tas, 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 vas, yas, in fact, all of them, and all vibhakti in general, the final s of these forms are not it. Even though they are halantyam, they are explicitly um, uh, Uh, described as not being it. So that means that they don't disappear. Even though as final consonants we might think by halantium they ought to. So uh, now we have bu plus tas. Bu plus tas. Now, as we remember before, and again, this is going to all just kind of fall into place for you pretty soon. By tingshit sarvadatakam, by tingshit sarvadatakam, 
uh, tas boot plus tas, the tas will be get the name Sarvadataka, the Sanya Sarvadataka, by Tingshit Sarvadataka. So, uh, because it's obviously Ting. After that, by Kartri Shap, Kartri Shap, Shap comes to between the root Pu and the Sarvadataka ending Tas. So we now have Pu plus A uh, plus Tas. Now by Sarvadataka Ardadataka Yoho and our old friend <coughs> Ikoguna Vritti, Guna comes to the root and because of Ikahastane, Guna Syat that we have uh, explored, um, we know that the Guna comes to the U of Bhu and that that will be Po by Stanintra Tamaha, the closest Guna <coughs> to the Ik of Bhu will come and that's O. So we now have Bo Tas. Then by uh, a Sandhi Sutra that will become familiar soon, Echo Yodvayavaha. Echo Yavayavaha, the Bo plus A becomes Bav plus A plus Tas, and then you have your form Bhavataha, Bhavataha, and that's it. So we'll do one uh, grouping at a time and take our time. <laughs>